Types of motion. In this lecture, we're going to be discussing where am I now and where am I over the long term. By the end of this lecture, I hope that you can explain how an average measurement or simply a combination of many different instantaneous measurements and be able to describe it in the context of speed or velocity and actually know what the difference is. Now measurements made in science classes can come in two different flavors. In the pink box, we can talk about scalar, which to be honest is probably the numbers that you've been dealing with since kindergarten. Scalar are measurements that include units but really don't talk about directions. The most common one is distance. And so when we talk distances, we talk about things like uh, 48 miles or 2.08 centimeters. Or magnitude, this is really the kindergarten stuff, like three fingers. Or a speed such as uh, 11 miles per hour, or let's say 4.9 meters per second. Now, none of these measurements actually have directions indicated in them. But ve vectors, on the other hand, are measurements that include a unit and also include an indication of direction. And so, for example, displacement is almost exactly the same as distance, except you include one thing, a direction. So, for example, 2.08 centimeters and then I include an arrow telling people what direction we're traveling in. Accelerations are slightly different. Could I use a plus sign to indicate that I'm going forward at let's say 8.2 meters per second squared? And velocities. If I use a word, miles per hour, and I'm going northwest, I've indicated what direction I am actually traveling in. I'm applying for a new villain loan. Go by the name of Vector. It's a mathematical term, a quantity represented by an arrow with both direction and magnitude. Does Faye agree with this cartoon character? Yes, a vector is a direction and a magnitude, but he would include one more thing, a unit. Vector! That's me, because I'm committing crimes with both direction and magnitude. Oh, yeah! If I'm making measurements of how far things are, that is a an indication of, for example, distance. And distance is how far have I traveled regardless of direction. Now I want to run a thought experiment in which I walk around my laboratory bench. Now let's say that I start right here and I walk in this direction and let's say that I take four steps. And then I turn and I walk in this direction and I take two steps. And then I walk in this direction and I take another four steps. And then I turn and walk in this direction and I take two steps. What is my distance in the unit steps? My distance is 12, 12 steps. I simply add up all the steps that I've taken. It really doesn't matter what direction I'm going in, I'm just add them all up. This is a scalar kind of measurement. In order to make it a vector or a displacement, which is very similar to a distance, it's how far am I from where I started because now I'm actually paying attention to directions. I can use a bunch of different ways to denote directions north, south, east, west, up, or down. 
I can use a bunch of different ways to denote directions. I can talk about north, south, east, and west. I can talk about up and down. I could use words like forwards or backwards, right or left, or positive or negative. Now, positive simply means I'm traveling in the direction that I'm facing. The way, good way of thinking about it is, which direction are your eyes facing? That's positive. If positive is the direction your eyes are facing, what's negative? The other direction. Now, if I stop and think about this activity again as I walk around my bench, something changes here. I get, I have to, to announce that I'm walking plus four steps in this direction. Now, yes, I do travel this way, but this is the key. When I travel this way, I'm traveling negative four steps. And then, question is, how far away am I from where I started? The answer is zero. I'm exactly where I started, so my displacement is zero meters. I have ended up exactly where I started. So let's run a thought experiment. At four o'clock this morning, where were you? I hope most of you say that you were in your bed. And then you woke up and you brushed your teeth and you got on a bus and you went to school and you walked around school. And my question is, at lunchtime, how different was the distance that you had traveled from the displacement in which you had traveled? To be honest, these distance, this distance and displacement, they're probably very close to each other. But then, if I ask the question at 11 o'clock tonight, I imagine, I would hope, that you're back in your bed. And in this case, your distance is going to be a very large number, and your displacement is going to be zero because you, you are back to where you started. What about measurements of how fast? Speed is a question of how far have I traveled over an amount of time. And speed equals distance divided by time. Now, in this case, distance is a scalar number. What about time? Does time have a direction? Time is a scalar number as well. And so a scalar number divided by a scalar number is a scalar number speed. Is there a device? Does your parent's car have a device that measures this characteristic? Yeah, it's called a speedometer. The term meter means to measure. And so a speedometer measures speed. On the other side, Velocity is how far I have traveled over an amount of time and includes a direction. Now, velocity is usually refer, uh, represented with a lowercase b. I've seen it script dv as well. And velocity is different because it is a displacement, a distance with a direction, divided by time. Now, pay attention to your parent's speedometer, and does it ever tell you that you're going east or west? I don't think so. Your GPS might do that, and that is no longer a speedometer. It is a velocimeter. It's a velocity meter. Another interesting experiment is when mom or dad drives backwards out of your driving uh, out of your driveway. Pay attention to what the speedometer does. Does it go negative because you are traveling backwards? Does it tell you that you are traveling backwards in any sort of way? The last concept in this lecture is instantaneous versus average. Now, do you see part of a word in instantaneous? Yeah, the word instant. Instantaneous, and I've seen it, it basically it's an adjective that uh, modifies something else. And so velocity, and then subscript instantaneous, the instantaneous is describing the velocity. Or I've seen it velocity instant, kind of same idea. It, it modifies velocity. But instantaneous is a measurement that is observed for a very short period of time. This is over a split second. Imagine that you're just looking at one frame of film. And then the very next frame, things can change. And it measures the things that are happening right now in, in a split second. Now, you know that 
Mr. Fay drives a red Ferrari. No, actually he doesn't, but he wishes that he did. But my little red Ferrari could be traveling at 14.8 meters per second at this very moment. And the way in which I'd know that is I'd look down at the speedometer. I know that I'm traveling forward, so I can call it a velocity. So 14.8 meters per second forward. But then I need to look up in order to drive my Ferrari. And so sometime later, in order for me to know what my velocity is, I need to look down at my speedometer and I see that my velocity has changed to 21.2 meters per second. So looking down at your speedometer or your speedometer is an example of instantaneous velocities. Average, on the other hand, and once again, you can use the term average in the subscript here to modify, in this case, velocity, or AVG to modify velocity. Average is a measurement that is observed for a long period of time. This is a collection of measurements that is averaged. And so in our math class, in order to average numbers, you add them all up and you divide by the number of numbers. So if I'm, if I'm in my Ferrari again, you can look at the very first example of my velocity, followed by the very next example, and so on and so on and so on. And so at one point, I'm traveling 14.8 meters per second. But then the next split second, I'm traveling at 11.7. And then I'm traveling at 9.4. And then I'm traveling at 6.2. And if I were to add all of these up, I will get 24, I'm sorry, 42.1. And then I divide by 4 in order to average them. And I get an average speed of 10.525 meters per second, and that's my average velocity. There's a different way that I could really look at this. I could know exactly where my car is at one time, and then measure a very specific amount of time and find out how far I've gone. So for example, I travel 105.25 meters in the span of 10 seconds, and I can calculate my velocity, 1.100 105.25 divided by 10, 10 seconds, tells me that I traveled 10.525 meters. So here's a thought question. Um, Mr. Fay is in his Ferrari, and if the police are in a helicopter, timing how long it takes me to go from 1 all the way through 30 of the little dots that are in the middle of the road, if they're timing me how long it takes to do that, what kind of velocity are they looking at? Are they looking at instantaneous velocity or average velocity? If you said average, you'd be right. Basically, the police are looking at me over a long period of time, a long distance. And to be honest, they aren't really looking at how much I speed up or slow down in the middle. They're just looking at, here he is at one point, here he is at the next. Alternatively, if the police are shooting a radar gun at me, are they finding instantaneous velocity or average velocity? If you said instantaneous velocity, you'd be right, because the point at which the policeman pulls the trigger on the radar gun, it tells the policeman what the speed is at that very moment. Now, if I see the policeman in my little red Ferrari, I probably hit the brake, and the number that shows up in the policeman's gun changes immediately. These are instantaneous split-second velocity.